Crawford, good morning. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. If you can just now say in the next seven minutes, a few words uh, also about the recent trend in trade in environmental goods and also, also flagging the corruption context. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for allowing me to talk today. I'm from Traffic. It's an international conservation NGO established 45 years ago um, that specializes in wildlife trade, both the sustainability and the legality, and works in collaboration with close partners like WWF to support efforts to combat wildlife related crimes. Now, natural resources lend themselves to illicit practice. The theft of nature from these remote areas tends to go unnoticed and often unpoliced. And um, these can be places where resources for management of areas and enforcement are low, governance is limited and corruption is high. And a combination of factors is at play here, not just the obvious issues of poor governance in supply countries. I'm gonna talk about how syndicates impact the private sector through abuse of the legal systems that facilitate trade and transport um, through their networks of corrupted staff and officials um, using slick systems for smuggling. Uh, try saying that fast. Um, I'll also cover how criminal networks increasingly sell or launder wildlife and their products through legal online marketplaces. Now, 15 years ago, there was an explosion in illicit supply of wildlife fueled by the rising wealth in key demand countries like uh, China and Vietnam and the expanded business operations of organized crime uh, focused on wildlife and it facilitated a nature crisis, particularly for species like elephants, tigers, rhinos and pangolins. Um, and whilst Pietra mentioned the, the, the low risk and high profit commodities of environmental crime. Wildlife has very much been that situation. Uh, for example, UNODC uh, estimates that um, there were 400 million US dollars in illicit income generated just in 2016 to 2018 in Asian consumer markets for elephant ivory alone. And of course, and that's after the ivory market had actually contracted after the really peak years of 2011 to 2013. Um, poaching and um, trafficking is a dynamic um, and the balloon effect of geo geographical displacement really is prevalent. So for example, the market closure for elephant ivory in China meant that Vietnam then emerged as a major destination country and there were shifts away from the East African ports and criminality there. Um, and, and the organized crime connections in Nigeria saw that country emerge as a major transit country for ivory. Um, a lot of the high value or time sensitive wildlife and products are shipped by air, including ivory and the private sector um, with the range of corporate entities of airlines, freight forwarders, express parcel couriers and so on, um, can play a key role in helping to disrupt the smuggling of wildlife using their operations for air freight and baggage and even passengers. Um, the USAID Routes Partnership and the United for Wildlife Buckingham Palace Declaration have been working in recent years to identify the challenges for the industry and find appropriate actions and solutions to help them prevent wildlife trafficking. But to achieve impact, the actions must show clear benefits and efficiencies for the industry itself. And as a result, systemic approaches have been applied, such as the International Air Transport Association wildlife trafficking module for the industry's environmental assessments, wildlife trafficking gap assessments, including at airports, um, and their various action plans, auto detection technology, and staff reporting mechanisms. Recent reports from routes have shown cases where air transport employees are corrupted, where there's official involvement as well, and enable enabling this wildlife trafficking. But it's important that the industry doesn't shy away from the facts that aviation security itself is in jeopardy if wildlife traffickers can corrupt staff and they also need to look inward for solutions rather than laying it at the, at the hands of law enforcement um, or, or um, uh, corruption officials. In an upcoming routes report it was shown that from 55 major air transport hubs with known wildlife trafficking in instances over two thirds of those same ports and hubs reported other illicit traffic instances including narcotics, um, minerals and weapons in a given year. This shows that the traffickers are leveraging and exploiting the same air transport bottlenecks and weak points across their illicit products. Air transport companies and law enforcement agencies have a siloed approach generally and ways to enable that close cooperation have been recommended under routes that would also help counter corruption. Um, 
responses, however, to wildlife trafficking by the air transport industry are voluntary. And there is no international mandate from ICAO, the UN International Civil Aviation Organization. Getting that recognition within the industry structure has been a major challenge um, because there are security and facilitation working groups that really don't consider wildlife trafficking to be under their remit. But it is vital that this private sector is the second line of defense after law enforcement. They have access and insights across the board and how their systems can flag risks from the point of booking through to the final end, end destination. Uh, now, shifting gears, there are parallels between this often uneasy relationship between law enforcement, the private sector, and the online tech sector too, with companies that provide the legal open web platforms for trading and advertising. The illegal trade in wildlife like elephant ivory and live exotic pests has shifted significantly online over the last several years, starting first with e-commerce sites and now much more prevalent on the social media sites. Um, law enforcement has to detect illegal wildlife advertisements hidden among billions and billions of posts. Um, and so, for example, at any one time, the web platform eBay has 1.3 billion listings in effect globally, and that's just one platform on one day. So it's not feasible for law enforcement to police the internet effectively for the range of illicit goods that are openly available due to that scale issue. Um, so Traffic, WF and I4 work with the tech sector companies to tackle this issue alongside law enforcement efforts through the Coalition to End Wildlife Trafficking Online. There are 38 global companies, including Google, eBay, Facebook, Tencent, Alibaba, and we help companies with wildlife prohibition policies they can enforce with enhanced automated detection of prohibited listings and educating their users to report suspicious content. Now, as of March 2020, companies reported blocking or removing over 3.3 million listings that violated prohibited wildlife policies um, so, since the coalition launched in, launched in 2018. We just launched a pop-up alert with Facebook uh, in English language currently to inform users of prohibited wildlife. A banner pops up on the user's feed when they search prohibited wildlife terms combined with a commerce term. So you can test it out yourself on Facebook, search for buy antique ivory or tiger for sale, and this will pop up and it's a great for user awareness to inform the casual buyer. But we have other approaches to try to disrupt crime activity and impact their profits and either operations, but we have to prevent the posts from being put up there in the first place. Online companies are not equipped to undertake analysis of organized criminal activity on their platforms, and they rely on users and algorithms to identify the problems and NGOs like ours. Companies can only provide targeted information to law enforcement, and law enforcement couldn't really handle massive data dumps of their data sets anyway. So filtering and detection is not foolproof, but already we are seeing a greatly reduced level of open posts selling problematic wildlife on member platforms. Now the next phase is to assist companies in filtering the hundreds of thousands of prohibited listings they deal with each year and share that usable information for law enforcement so it's manageable. We're looking forward to doing that with the companies and some of them are open to this and we're developing protocols to take that forward. So with that, I'll end there, thank you.